All right, hey, Riley here from becominganelectrician.com. I'm gonna show you how to install a scab for your box. I usually like to put it uh, about 10 inches. You can see uh, the black line where my thumb is down here. Usually you have someone who does the layout and they mark all the switches. The X means one scab. If there was two X's, that would be two scabs and there's no more than two scabs. Usually it's nice to have like a sawhorse or something, you know, something that you can really secure, you know, because when it comes to a saw, especially if you're not used to using tools all the time, um, a skill saw is a very, very dangerous power tool, whereas compared to something like, let's say a sawzall or a hacksaw, they are dangerous, but a skill saw is like very dangerous. I'll show you just how a skill saw works quickly. So this, what makes this one nice is it is a battery operated skill saw. And in order to use this one, you actually have to push down the lever here and then the trigger as well, and it will go, okay? But typically on a job site, they are corded. And whenever you have a cord power drill or like anything corded, it's always gonna be way more powerful. When it comes to how this works, we just use the zero and that's your line that you cut on. Now, when you cut heavy, that means that you're cutting the line a little bit longer than what the line is, but sometimes you wanna cut a little heavy, sometimes if you wanna fit the piece of wood in better. If you are doing a lot of switches, okay, like a lot of, a lot of single gang switches, then I would just recommend cutting a whole bunch at 10, and then you just, you know, you, you take your tape measure, you're just gonna measure 10, 20, 30, 40, and then you just cut a whole bunch. But if you are installing a light, Sometimes if you have to put a scab across to get it center, you're gonna to have to custom cut those every time. Like you don't know the measurement. But for something general, such as a scab where they just have an X and you need to block it out just a little bit, that's where right now you just gotta believe me, but it's gonna be 10 inches, then it'd be like 20 inches kind of thing, okay? So when it comes to cutting, again, we're just using that zero. And then I just line it up and then you just give it a cut. So I'll just cut one more. Um, actually, this one I'll cut a little longer just because of, uh, let's say we're gonna do a double scab somewhere. So what we're looking for is, again, this is top of box. So we wanna make sure that our actual scab is just a little bit above that because we have the ear of the box. And you wanna also make sure that the scab is flush, right? Like you don't want it sticking out and you don't want it behind. So I'll just put it around here. And again, another thing, the screw, sometimes it's nice to put it on a little bit of an angle. It'll hold a little bit stronger. If you put it in straight, it could even potentially uh, go out the other stud as well, especially with the longer screws. So again, I'm just making sure this is flush. And here we go. So again, you can see it's still pretty loose. So once we put in the other screw, we can always kind of pull it back a little bit and then send it in and uh, it'll tighten it all up for us. So this one here, I'm gonna maybe angle down a little bit, get it started. And then before it goes into this other piece of wood, again, I'm gonna make sure it is on, uh, you know, it's nice and flush, okay? So here we go. Again, I'm kind of holding it tight. So that's a pretty good scab. Um, sometimes you screw them in, they're pretty loose. I'm gonna back the top one off and then we're gonna seat it a little more. So that, that's a pretty good install. Okay, let's get this other scab on here. So this one is the one that's just a little bit smaller. Again, we wanna make sure they're flush and we will screw it in. So again, when you're only using one hand for this screw, it's a little tricky. So you kinda of wanna work your way in until it bites then it's a lot easier. And again, when it comes to the drill, you don't just want to hold it down, you want to kind of work your way in, then you can fully do it. And then again, you just want to make sure it's all flush. That's probably the most important thing is flush so that the drywall goes on good and that your box installs good. And you can see when I did it with two hands, it's just way easier. So the second screw is a lot easier than, than the first one, which is why when the scab's on the ground, you can already put the screws in and it'll save you kind of that, that, that uh, step. Okay, so feel it. 
That's a good solid, solid scab, okay? Now in this situation, some people, they get lazy and they'll just mark uh, close to where the mark was before. But again, like I told you, like if the engineer said center is what, you know, whatever center, like let, let's say, let's say they just said center is like right here. Again, how I like to approach boxing is if this is center, because again, you're never going to get center. It's very, very tricky. And especially when you're standing up, now you have to bend down lower. It's just hard on your body, hard, hard on your back. Again, I would mark top of box right here. And then, because again, so the engineer saying, let's say center of box is right here. I put the box on, I find what top of box is. Now we're going to find that measurement. Okay, so again, uh, in the previous video, I talked to you about above finished floor. And that is what our measurement would be right here above finished floor. So that's 48 and a half. Okay. So 48 and a half in this situation is the top of box. You always have to look at your prints because every single job site is different and you can't rely on what you did on the last job site. And again, this is the single switch. So then again, when it comes to our single gang box, like you saw in the previous video, just uh, the biggest thing with these is just making sure that it is flush right like we don't want it we don't want it angled or anything like that we don't want it further out because again the box has tabs and it would make it hard on the drywaller so i am just going to go top a box and then i usually like to put it in the closest one it gives the tightest hold all right so there you guys go so there's two scabs that we installed that is how you install it again i always like top a box it's way easier in the next video, we will put a single, uh, um, um, a double gang switch right here, and I'll just show you how um, we mount up to the screw, uh, to the screw hole if we're going to be mounting another box right here. That's the most important thing because when drywall goes on, you can't really change things too much. Again, we just used a skill saw. This one's pretty handy. It's a battery, but really in the real world, your battery is going to be dying all the time, especially if multiple people multiple people are using the skill saw. So having a corded skill saw is by far the best way, the more powerful, even though nowadays there are batteries which are like huge and will last almost the whole day. Um, but batteries are a hot commodity to be stolen as well. Um, and also if you are working with your company, make sure to use company tools. Do not be using your own personal skill saw and stuff. Companies should be providing that stuff for you. Um, and there you guys go. So that is what a scab is. You don't want to make them too long because again, some job sites I've been on and there wasn't very much wood. So it was hard to find scabs to do your build outs. If you can conserve your wood, it allows you to, you know, be wiser with your wood. And then also like if you were to install, let's say up here, if you were going to install a, um, a box in here, sometimes you need a bigger piece of wood than what is going on right here okay so that is what's called a scab and a single gang box again you guys can subscribe here on youtube i have a playlist about how to rough in as an electrician and if you would like to get my free book for apprentice electricians just go to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe tons of valuable tips in there if you are an apprentice electrician wanting to become a journeyman and learning best practices